Hey peeps, so I'm going to do something a little bit differently tonight. Um, long story short, in the forums that I frequent, you know, the places I hang out, stuff like that, where all the cool kids are, uh, I see a lot of people asking, you know, how do I do X, how do I do Y, and someone will respond with, well, you need to be able to solder and then you can do blah blah blah, and first person will say, but I can't solder, but that's okay. Here's my response to that. Soldering is super easy to get started. Um, somewhat difficult to master, but there's there's like a uh, there's a difficulty curve. You can get really good at it really quickly, or at least good enough at it really quickly. But my recommendation, as far as getting started goes, you know, pick up one of these cheap kits or something. Um, I recently learned about Velman. Um, of course, this isn't a Velman kit, or maybe it is. I don't know, but. I didn't get it from Velman, I got it off of AliExpress here. This is just a dollar, really. Um, but what it is, it's just a little spectrum analyzer, nothing fancy. Uh, it's based off the LM3915. Uh, I forget the name, but it's based off of that thing. Um, pretty easy to assemble, but I think it'll be a little bit fun to try and do that on camera here. So instead of using my usual soldering iron, I even broke out a relic of my past here. Uh, I got this old Radio Shack 30 watt iron. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in because it does take a bit to heat up. And I'm just gonna go ahead and stick that in my... well before I do that. I did go ahead and put on a relatively new tip. This is a chisel tip. I usually use the uh, cone tips, or at least I used to on this iron, but the cone tip that was on there is seen better days. It's getting pretty eaten away. And I found this in my drawer, which I think is a little bit funny because this used to be as long as this one, but I don't know if I was just super bad at taking care of it or if this thing really just chews through tips or what, but either way, Ooh, that doesn't fit in that. Okay, never mind. We're not going to put in that. Put that in there. Um, so, let's go ahead and get started with this kit. I'm going to go ahead and unpack everything here. This kit didn't really come with instructions, but that's not really that big of a deal. Should be pretty easy to figure out. And, uh, well, if not, I'm sure there are cheat sheets. So, we got these two cables here. Looks like those are for the two inputs here. Uh, got a row of LEDs, some resistors, looks like a capacitor. I'm guessing that's this guy right here. Uh, more resistor. Uh, variable resistor. It doesn't say which way that goes and I have no idea which way it's supposed to go. So, this will be a learning experience for both of us, I guess. I believe there's a picture of an assembled unit on here. Yeah. So, you can see that narrows it down a little bit. We can use that as a cheat sheet, or you can just wing it and see what happens. Um, but, I think we're going to be good. One thing to note with these kits is they use these old style, old style, God, um, these resistors here with the bands and the color coding. And, you know, you can memorize the color coding chart. A lot of old school guys did, and they'll tell you it's necessary, or maybe they've learned better these days and won't tell you that anymore. Uh, but you can always just use a multimeter to check it if you're like me and you don't have that memorized. Or you can pull up a cheat sheet. I mean, we all have smartphones. Um, but I'm just going to use the multimeter because I don't have that memorized. A lot of what I do is surface mount. And this color banding um, key doesn't really apply to surface mount stuff. It only really applies to the uh, through hole stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this socket out of the foam, try and straighten out some of the pins because that got bent in transit. I don't know what happened, but we'll start now. We should probably start with the low profile stuff. When soldering, you got to kind of think about what you're doing, 
few steps in advance. You know, make sure you're not making it more difficult than it needs to be. I'm going to use the same solder I've been using just because I only have the one type, really. Uh, but this thing, oh, it looks like it's just about warmed up. Get that tip tinned. You're going to drown it in solder because this is practically a new tip here. I think I've used it once before, before I went ahead and retired this iron. This iron does not have temperature control. You just plug it in and hope everything works out for the best. Um, oh, here's the first thing that's confusing. We have extra parts. Okay. So I guess let's start off with the resistors here. Because those are the smallest, and I think they'll be the easiest to work around. So I have my multimeter set to... Ah, excuse me. What, like 2,000 ohms or something? Just double check that it's working. I ran into that problem before. So this first one is about 63. That doesn't seem right at all. I don't have anything that has that low value. I have 100, and I have 10. I might need to look these up. I'm going to guess this is the 10 ohm resistor because 3 ohms doesn't really make sense. Fifty-seven. Yeah, I think I'm going to look up the color coding. Yeah, I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and look these up and get them all labeled. Alright, so I was sitting there with the with the chart and then I realized there's this calculator on DigiKey that makes it so much easier. You just type in the numbers it tells you the value or you put in the colors and it gives you the value. Uh, it's not too difficult to figure out based on the chart. My hardest, the biggest thing I struggle with is determining what actual colors those are on the resistor. But it's it's not too bad. I, I still like the surface mount ones better. Um, I don't know exactly what's going on with some of these resistors, like why there are so many, but whatever, we'll come back to that. Um, so now that we've got the resistors, well now that I've got the resistors sorted, I'm going to go ahead and start with these, and I'll do the 1K ones last. I'm going to do this 100 ohm one first, and orientation does not matter for resistors. You can put them in whichever direction you want. I'm just going to go and bend the leads, stick that in there, and let's get that soldered down. As far as solder goes, I'm using 6040, which is 60% lead, 40% tin, or something like that, I think. I don't know, it doesn't actually say on the solder. It's model number 64009, so I'm guessing that's what what that stands for. Now, I highly recommend getting a soldering iron stand, or you'll do what I've done with this thing very many times, and you will accidentally stick it into something that it shouldn't be stuck into. I'm going to go ahead and trim these leads down so they're not sticking out so much. All right. Next up, let's do this capacitor here. Now with these guys, polarity doesn't matter. I forget specifically what type of capacitor these are called. I'm sure someone down in the comments can correct me. Pretty sure these are tantalum capacitors. But for these, polarity also does not matter. And I'm only doing this one because it's off in, the, off in the rhubarb. And as far as soldering goes, we want to heat the joint with the iron and then apply solder into that joint. And then once you've got that down, go ahead and trim these leads off. 
you can leave the leads as long as you're 100% sure that they're not going to short on anything. I'm not, so I'm going to trim them off. This says 2.2K. I have a feeling that's this resistor, and I just have it mislabeled. Or this one. Uh-oh. I'll have to double check that again in a second, because I don't have a 100 or a... Uh, I think I just got this mixed up. Wait. I did just do the 100. Okay, so that's 10K, that's 20K. Okay, never mind. I don't have a 20K spot. I have a 2.2K, so it's probably that one. Um, I have a single 10K spot, and then a 10 I'm going to do all the 1Ks right now, because those ones I'm sure of. Sorry if I'm working off camera here. And I apologize for the uh, soundtrack, if, if you can hear that. My neighbor still doesn't quite understand that when you live in an apartment, everyone can hear what you're doing. And, uh, or maybe he does understand, he just didn't give a damn. Needless to say, he's a musician. Self-proclaimed. I don't bug him too much, though, because he only makes noise on the weekends. Oh, we should do all three of these at the same time. That would make more sense. So all of these are the same. You can get a uh, resistor lead bender, probably from DigiKey, but unless you're doing this stuff like constantly, it's better to just do it by hand, or at least cheaper. There we go. I don't know where that solder was going, but it wasn't going into the joint. also entirely possible that they didn't even ship the proper resistors. That'd be disappointing. But I do have some, if need be. Alright. Good enough. Now I have one, two, three more resistor spots, but four more resistors. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause for a moment and double check these values because none of these make sense. I have a 510 ohm resistor, two 10K, one 20K, well, yeah, and one 20K. But I only have a spot for one 10K, so maybe I have an extra 10K and I just have the other two wrong. I don't know. I'll let you know in a sec. So... I double check these, I triple check these, I check them both with the resistor calculator, the color chart, and with my multimeter, and I do have the values correct. So I'm going to go ahead and assume they either just shipped the wrong resistors, since I happen to have an extra anyway. Um, I went ahead and dug around, I mean this isn't a very precise toy, I guess. Uh, so these would probably work fine. Just use the next closest one that you have. But I went ahead and dug around in my box of parts here, and I found some 10 ohm resistors and some 2.2K resistors. 
uh, I highly recommend if you're into this stuff pick up a book of resistors this is basically a book just they're loose and I have to sort through it every time I'm looking for something a book would do better but it is what it is that's what I have so just to double check here I have my multimeter set to the 200 value I'm gonna set it to 2000 and this 510 ohm resistor if I put this across the leads here we can see it comes up as about 507. Now that's well within tolerance between my meter and the fact that I'm using my fingers to hold it. So I'm fairly confident that's a 500 ohm resistor. If you want to measure these higher ones, I'm going to bump it up to the 20k setting here. And this should be a 10k resistor, so it should show up as about 10. So 9.3 five good enough for me and this one should be a 20k so it should show up as about 20 and it's a little bit off but it could just be how I'm holding it so I don't know I think it's good enough and you can check all of your resistors like this I don't know why I was getting such wonky values to begin with when I was started measuring but I think it's going to be all right. So I'm going to go ahead and do this 10K one here. And just stick it through. You can bend the lead so it doesn't fall out on you. these off. And I'll set these aside because we're done with those. And we will use, I'm just going to tear this off. This is a 10 ohm resistor. Yes, yes, everyone's very excited. That will go right there. And of course you can tell where I had to substitute my own resistors because I don't have... My resistors, I believe, are different uh, like quarter watt versus eighth watt or something. I Again, I don't know which is which because I don't have the color codes memorized. Whoops. So my blue ones are either rated higher or maybe even lower. I don't know. One more. Let's do the 2.2k one. Again, I'm just going to tear this off to keep these from getting unmanageable. I think in this case, the uh, conical tip would be a little bit easier than this super huge chisel, but the conical tip is literally eating itself. All right, that's it for the resistors. Now let's do, I guess, the diodes. So it looks like, let me pull up that picture again here. It looks like the red ones are all the way over to the left. So those are probably the peaks or something or however the heck this works. So let's go ahead and get that started. Now as far as the polarity goes, I actually have a super handy picture here. But you can just Google LED polarity. You'll find something like this. Don't have to memorize it because, again, 
whenever you're playing with electronics, chances are pretty good you're near a computer or a smartphone or something. And you can Google it, but long story short, the positive side is the long lead. The negative side is the short lead. And on this PCB here, it is labeled with the right side as positive. So that means the positive lead goes on right. Now I'm going to bend this because I kind of like how that looks, but it's going to make soldering this kind of difficult. Maybe I can manage. So, yep, positive is the long one. I'm going to have to do this one first because I shouldn't have bent it that way. Now, with LEDs, whoops. You want to be in and out nice and quick. These things are a little bit sensitive to heat, at least much more so than the resistors that we were just doing. Again, I mean, don't be afraid. To, to solder, you do have to heat it up. But you don't want to linger there longer than you have to. So while the camera was cooling down, I went ahead and did all but the last of the LEDs here. Uh, I did have a little whoopsie doodle right here, and I did lift one of the tracks. Um, you know, happens to the best of us. What you gonna do? But we'll, I'll go over how I'm gonna fix that in just a moment here. Let's go ahead and get this last LED soldered. Because I do want to show you something here. As far as getting the position proper, you can just go ahead and tack one lead down. And of course that ended up perfectly straight, so it's not a really good example, but you see how I can kind of move it around a bit since one of the leads is still loose? That's why you, you want to solder down one lead, that way you can move it into the position you want, solder down the other lead, That is a particularly crusty looking joint. And then, crop off the extra. So, before we continue, there are a couple things I want to go over. Um, first, some of these are a little bit crooked, but I think that's going to be okay. Uh, if you have joints that look like this one does here, or you see how it's just kind of pointy, just pointing off, that's because this joint didn't get a lot of flux in particular. Now flux is an absolute necessity when it comes to soldering. It basically makes the solder wet. It lowers the surface tension and it cleans what you're trying to solder to. So as far as fixing this joint goes, the best thing to do would be to apply a little bit of flux and then just reheat it with the iron and it'll fix itself. However, if you're soldering together a kit, you know, you're just getting started out, chances are you don't have any standalone flux. That's where your solder comes in handy. Uh, solder itself, you've probably seen, let me take this out of my holder here. seen how my stuff is super old, of course, but you've seen it say rosin core on it. Well, that just means that your solder inside the solder, it's basically hollow and inside there is a little bit of rosin flux. So to fix this joint, I'm just going to heat it up, feed some more fresh solder in there, and the flux in the solder is going to take care of those issues that I had earlier. I'm going to do that for the ones that I just cropped as well, try and smooth them out. 
and just as an example here, oops, I can't even get it to do what I'm trying to show you how to fix. Let's say you accidentally got a got a short there, you got a nice big old blob. The easiest way to fix this, again, just apply flux and then you can just wipe it off. I'm going to go ahead and clean off the tip of my soldering iron. Now I'm just using some of this brass sponge that I have here with my other soldering iron. Just clean it off by doing that nonsense. You can also use a wet sponge. I don't recommend it though. Uh, it does put some unnecessary stress on your soldering iron tip and soldering iron itself by you know introducing a rapid cooling cycle. Uh, but it does work, and if you're just starting out, it's probably better than nothing. But you can see my tip is nice and clean now. So as far as fixing this goes, I'm just going to heat up this massive joint, feed more solder in, and then just take my iron away. And look at that. It's probably hard to tell because there's a ton of burnt flux there, but there's no more short. Now, back to this trace that I lifted here, you can tell, so it looks like these LEDs are all common anode, which means the plus side, the positive side, is all common together, and they are controlled by switching off the negative side. So I accidentally ripped that pad on the plus side. So what I'm going to do to fix that now you could just try and scrape up the solder mask and, and blob on there a bunch of solder and that will probably do the trick, but I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to take one of the leads that I cropped off earlier, I'm going to solder it onto that component there, set this down. Highly recommend getting a stand with your soldering iron. And then I'm going to flex that down and over to the other positive lead on the LED. And try and get this soldered down without lifting. I'm going to hold it in place. Oh man, my tweezer tips are all cattywampus on me. See if I can hold that down into place. It's probably going to fling off. Oops. See, now I have a short on there. That didn't do what I wanted at all. I'm going to clean that off again. Just feed some solder in there. There we go. Oop. Now that that's fixed, I think we'll be good to trim that off. And oh, I gotta do the other side as well because of how badly I screwed that up. But that's okay. I have plenty of leads here. I gotta fix my tweezers, man. I guess this is one argument against cheap tweezers. And it's not working at all. I'm going to use my hemostats then. And I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did. Ooh. I'm going to trim off the end of this lead because there's some uh, adhesive residue on it. It's just going to make my soldering a little bit more crusty than it needs to be otherwise. Oof. I 
accidentally just shorted that one out again too. All right, well, I'll come back and fix that in just a moment. Now, the reason I'm showing you all this instead of just, you know, moving past like, oh yeah, start off with a kit. Nothing can possibly go wrong. Well, stuff does go wrong on occasion. And you gotta accept that, especially when you're learning to solder. But the point that I want to make is that it's not that stuff won't go wrong, because it will, quite frankly, much more often than you want it to. Um, but the point is, when stuff does go wrong, it's important to know how to fix fix it when it does go cattywampus on you. So in this case, I think I'm going to be all right. Now those leads are running pretty close together, but there is an air gap, so I think we're going to be okay. Clip that off again. And now we have that trace bypassed and all three of these LEDs wired together so that wherever this trace starts off, it still connects through. All right. So I just figured out, I just saw something that I missed before. There is a resistor there, 20K it looks like in the middle, but of course I already threw those in a pile, so I don't know which is which. Let's see if this top one is my 20K here. Yep, okay. So that would, that was convenient. Feed that through. Also at this point in the video, I think it's worth mentioning uh, because I am starting to really feel it on my iron here. Soldering irons do have a duty cycle. Now this one's pretty dumb, as in there are no electronics in it. It's just a heating element connected straight to the uh, AC leads in my wall here. But this thing is going to keep getting hotter and hotter and hotter until eventually it overheats. That's probably why I went through so many tips because, you know, I'd just keep it plugged in, keep working on it till I was done. And, yeah, it's not really that good for it. Uh, so, at this point, I say it'd be a good time to take a break. But I'm going to keep going. Because I think we can get this finished pretty quickly. So next up, I'm going to go ahead and do the socket for the CPU here. It doesn't really matter which way it goes in. Both ways are the same, but you'll make this so much easier on yourself if you pay attention to this. There's a little half circle on the right-hand side, and if you look at the socket, there's a half circle there as well. So that's to indicate which way, which orientation it goes in. I'm going to go ahead and insert that, flip it over, and we're just going to do two pins. That corner and this corner here. Now to make sure it's nice and flat, I'm going to apply pressure with my finger, reheat that joint, let it cool, do the same thing on the other side. Once I'm happy with that, just got to do the rest of the joints. Okay, those are all good. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Next up, it looks like we have three components left. We have the potentiometer and then the two connectors here. And if we flip back to my reference picture, again, I don't think it matters. I think it'll be fine either way, but I'm looking at the picture here and we have the spinny bit on the left. It's the uh, technical term, by the way, spinny bit. So again, just gonna do the one lead and then see how that came out crooked. That's why I only did one lead because now I can hold it, put some pressure on the bottom there, reheat that joint and it'll sit down right where it's supposed to be. Now it'll stick in place when I flip it over to do the other two legs. And this one, I'm going to go ahead and trim. And oh, there is one more capacitor. I didn't even see that one. So there goes a capacitor right there. What a wonderful instructor I am. I don't even know what the hell I'm doing. Oh well. I'm having fun. I suppose that's all that matters. Again, you want to heat the joint and apply solder to the joint, not to the iron. You can get away with applying solder to the iron and then transferring it to the joint sometimes, but just a heads up, most of the time that does not work. All right, so to solder these in, I'm going to insert the connectors into the wires here, just so I have something to hold, because if I just stick my finger on there, I'm gonna be sticking my finger right on the middle terminals. That's gonna get hot real quick, and I'm not gonna have a good time. I suppose I could just solder wire straight to this thing. It doesn't really need the terminals, but one in Rome, I guess. Plus it came with them, what the hell. Just gonna do the one. And you can see how crooked those came out, but that's okay. Because I can apply pressure, reheat that joint, and it'll sit down exactly where it needs to go. And I can come back and do the other one. And there we go. We're all done with soldering for the kit. Uh, however, I do still need to do a wee bit of soldering just so we can test it out and see if it works here. So bear with me a moment. I'm just going to go and put my soldering stand back together and get it out of the way. So this is, or is supposed to be, hopefully it works, a uh, audio visualizer or a VU meter as a, I'm sure it's been called. Oh no. I thought the purpose of this, this stupid foam was to prevent this from happening. Now, it's not the end of the world, but it is a pain in the ass. All right, give me a couple minutes. I need to go straighten out these pins and I'm gonna go ahead and solder up a cable here so I can test it out. I'll be back in a moment. All right, so I went ahead and got these pins all straightened out and you'll have to forgive the ridiculousness that is the setup in the background. But once you've got the pins all straightened out, which is how they should be, pay attention. There's this little half moon or half circle cut out on the top of this device on this chip here. You can see it's on this side, but not on this side. So just line up the half circles there and insert that. Per the instructions of this kit, 
Uh, it says it's supposed to take 9 to 12 volts, but I did actually look up the data sheet on this chip here, and I forget exactly what it said, but I think it said like 2 to 25 volts or something like that, so I'm guessing it has its own internal voltage regulator. Um, don't quote me on that one, just look up the data sheet. It is LM3915. L as in Lima, M as in Mike, or Mansi, depending on your standard there. And uh, I couldn't figure out the best way to test the audio itself. Uh, I kept trying out this cable I have here. It's just got the AUGs on both sides. And I had a uh, jack that I was soldering to, but I just I couldn't get it to work worth a damn. I think if I try it again, I'd have a little bit more luck because of something that I'll discuss in just a moment here. But let me brush away all these leads and stuff because at one point I did even short it out. You know, you gotta be careful. There's all these contacts on the bottom. So anyway, I decided upon about three volts. That seems to work best. So I have my universal power supply here powering it up. I have it set to about three volts. You can see it's drawing next to nothing. And then I have this DS here. I just went ahead and desoldered the left speaker and then soldered this thing in its place. So we still have the right speaker, but the left speaker is disconnected. I'll go ahead and pull this up here and turn the volume. Oh, no, it's not working. What's going on? Oh, it's inverted now. That's interesting. Let me kill that light. So the DS is on. I don't know why you can't really see that. But you can see this thing's doing its thing now. Oh, there it goes. Now it's working like it's supposed to. But there's that. Pretty simple. Change the soundtrack up a bit. How cool is that, right? So yeah, this is only mono. Um, I suppose you could pick up a second kit if you wanted to do stereo, or hell, just get another another one of these. You know, wire them up in the same fashion. Um, you can put this parallel with your actual speaker output. So if you want to grab a couple of these, hook them up to your computer speakers. Man, I think that would look pretty kick-ass. But, well, there you have it. That's that shitty little kit that I bought. This thing cost me a whopping $1. And you know what? I think it was pretty fun to build. I think it came out all right, even though I fucked up that spot right there. But even my repair seems to have worked out, I think. I don't know. I haven't seen it peak that high. Uh, yeah, there it goes. Just did it a second ago. I found that the lower the source voltage, the uh, lower the input it supports. Uh, so you can tweak this potentiometer here if you have it hooked up to a louder source, such as like a desktop computer speaker or something. And then you can spin the, yeah. So clockwise turns the, the gain down, counterclockwise turns it up. And same thing, lower voltage turns the gain up as well. I found three volts to be about the sweet spot. You turn this thing down too low and the, the LEDs get pretty dim. They're still lighting up, but you can barely see them. Turn that up a little, you can still see them. They're very dim. I think three volts is about the sweet spot. But they're nice and bright, but not peaking too high. See, if we turn this up even higher, come on. You can see now it's not peaking quite as high, but the LEDs are nice and bright. So I think that's just how that works. But, I don't know, play with it. So yeah guys, I know this was a super long video and I apologize for that. 
this kit itself doesn't take nearly that long to assemble. Um, I don't know, I just I thought I'd have a little bit of fun with it. But if you really do want to get into soldering, I highly suggest picking up one of these cheap kits. I mean, this, this thing was a dollar. If I mess it up, who cares? I'm at a dollar, you know? It's not really a big deal whatsoever. Um, but, you know, if you want to get into soldering, pick up one of these kits. Pick up a cheap soldering iron um, so you can get it assembled. Hell, maybe even buy a couple kits. But there's a, uh, you can get these pretty cheap on AliExpress, like I said, or there's a company called Velleman that sells them. V E L L E M A N. Uh, I'd recommend them over AliExpress because I think the AliExpress kits are just clones of what Velleman sells. But either way, you know, I think it's a good little intro. Gives you plenty of practice there, especially if you fuck up. That's. It actually gives you more practice to see if you can get it fixed. But yeah, I, I feel like at this point I'm probably just repeating myself. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys thought. If you thought that was this was a pretty decent video, if you want me to make more like this. Uh, I have no plans to. No immediate plans to anyway. But, you know, I had fun. I think it was pretty cool. And uh, I guess my cat's getting pretty grumpy there. It must be dinner time. So I guess I'll, uh, I'll get out of your hair, I'll let you guys get back to it, and uh, you have yourself a great night. Thanks for watching.